Hi, Laureen again with Lady Design Interiors. Last time we talked about LVT, LVP, waterproof flooring. Today we're going to talk about wood floors, actual real wood. There's two ways that you can get real wood flooring. Your traditional solid wood, which is most often three quarter inch thick, tongue and groove with a nail down or glue down application. The other way to get wood flooring is going to be through engineered wood. And what that is is an engineered core or base, uh, either particle board, press board, or MDF as most people know it. Uh, the best way for an engineered floor is to be on plywood. The more plies, the better. The plywood creates structural stability. And then there will be a layer of real wood attached to the top of that. So you're get, still getting the look and feel and actual application of real wood uh, with some structural integrity. Depending on where you are at, located your climate, will greatly inform which of those two products that you want to choose. Also, uh, the other thing that will affect that is the size of plank that you want. For instance, we're in Oregon here. We have a very high humidity on a regular basis and we have uh, pretty decent temperature changes with that humidity. Yeah, especially in the spring and the fall, we can get as high as 60 or 70 degrees during the day and then down into the 40s and 50s at night. It'll get really moist here on the regular basis. If you live in a coastal or very humid climate, uh, those are all things that will affect wood flooring. So solid wood plank three quarter inch thick will have more expansion and contraction in varying clients, climates like that. So the more moisture or more climate uh, temperature barometer shift that you have on a daily basis, the more uh, expansion and contraction you will have in your wood floor, which means separation between the planks over time. And so in those climates and places, what you want is to stick with the smaller planks, four inches or less. Talk to your flooring installer. Uh, sometimes your flooring salesperson will know the differences, but most often you want to double check with an installer that has experience with wood. They will tell you what the maximum is recommended in your climate and in your situation for solid wood. The great thing about engineered wood floors is you still get the great look and feel and wonderful aspects of a, a real wood floor with more structural stability. And this is where you can start getting into your five, six, eight, ten inch wide planks where you get those nice wide planks that uh, can be really desirable depending on the look that you're going for. Hardwoods versus softwoods will also affect, you know, the patina that your floor will take on over time. So keep those things in mind depending on, again, your application. Uh, animals, children, what kind of use? Is it a high commercial use? Is it a residential use? All of these things will come into effect when you're choosing wood, wood flooring, and what kind you want. The, despite uh, some misconceptions, Engineered flooring is not less expensive unless you're getting typically the kind that will have your MDF or particle board. I do not recommend those applications, but if you want real wood for less money, that's about where you're going to find that. Uh, if it has a true plywood core, then they are typically going to be as expensive or more expensive than solid wood, which quite often surprises people. So the extra engineering and labor that goes into producing engineered wood floors creates that higher price point. What you want to look for in an engineered wood floor is that the actual wood layer comes in a tongue and groove floor. You have this little lip that comes out that like that, uh, the, the tongue part of the wood flooring, and on an engineered quality engineered wood floor, you want that wood layer, the real wood layer, to come almost all the way down to that tongue. In that case, you can get as many resands and refinishes on an engineered wood floor as you can on a solid wood floor. That's a common misconception that you cannot refinish engineered wood floors, but that is not true. What is also true on any wood floor, quality engineered or solid wood, is that typically you're not going to sand and refinish your wood floor more than every 20 years, typically. So uh, keep that in mind when you're purchasing those items. 
The other thing that I like to talk to my clients about is the finish that is on top. Whether or not you do a matte uh, textured finish on a wood floor versus a smooth gloss finish. Your smooth gloss finishes are always going to show damage faster than your uh, rustic or textured matte finishes and typically those are some type of a oil finish that can be reapplied which can be really um, nice especially if you're going to have a high use lots of pets and kids uh, toys running across the floor that kind of thing uh, it just allows for a more beautiful patina over time and the other thing is the difference between sand in place or pre-finished a sand in place wood floor is very traditional wood planks go in raw and then are stained and or not stained to your preference and then put and then have a finish put over the top of them after they have been sanded in place which means you don't see any grooves in between the planks and the floor itself is completely smooth those are typically going to give you you can now get matte finishes for those which are awesome and amazing and you can also you know pick your gloss medium gloss high gloss depending talk to your floor installer about those and how sustainable or uh, toxic the finishes are that they're using make sure you have that conversation uh, sand in place is most often uh, solid because uh, you get that first sanding out of the way in the first install and so those are almost always solid wood that get nailed or glued in place nailing or gluing is typically dependent on whether what type of underfloor you have your underlayment whether you're laying over the top of concrete or not concrete uh, wood floors uh, wood underlayment excuse me Typically on concrete, you will never do solid wood because again of the expansion and contraction of moisture content. What you will be doing over a concrete, uh, daylit basement, basement, concrete floor, if you're doing real wood, is almost always going to be an engineered wood with some type of a vapor barrier underneath. Uh, and uh, actually most often those will be glue down application, which can get exceptionally expensive, but look amazing when you have matching wood floors. If you have more questions about wood, wood floors, and what that looks like, please contact me, Lady Design Interiors. I'd love to hear from you. Any questions, comments? Uh, I'd love to hear other opinions, so please feel free to give me those too, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you.